Okay, Pep Talks family, Daylights, friends, whoever's listening, uh, thank you for joining. So I do have another installment today that we're going to be talking about, and I do have another guest. But first things first, I'm going to go ahead and explain the topic that we have, which is how to be the adult that you need it. So with that being said, getting into it, my guest today, she is a Texas beauty a vocal powerhouse who has released two albums. She's also a vocal coach and an all around light of joy. And fun fact, she celebrates Tree G Music Day in February of every year as well. Um, let her tell you more about that. So we're going to welcome in Tree G. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. I am well also. So I I am honored and grateful to have you join today. You know, I am honored to be here. Um, I greatly appreciate you holding space with your platform, um, gearing towards, you know, hearts, ears, spirits, souls that need to hear it and be heard thank you for pep talks thank you that means a lot certainly means more than you know so i definitely appreciate it oh um, you're welcome so whew, we're not gonna start waterworks today <laughs> no waterworks <laughs> none of that um, so before we get into it, one of the things I'm trying to make sure I start doing before we get into the conversations is doing my pep talks prayer that I have. So mm-hmm. um, I'm going to take a quick moment to do that together um, mm-hmm. and then we can get into it. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So with that being said, the prayer simply says, this is not a space to feel judged. This is not a space to feel ashamed. This is not a space to feel alone. But this is a space to feel peace. This is a space to confess. This is a space to let go. And this is a space to receive. Spirit of light, we invite you in to illuminate the darkness. Spirit of peace, we invite you in to settle the chaos within. Spirit of love, we invite you in to comfort. And spirit of joy, we invite you in to make us whole. While our pieces make us feel separated, we understand that it is our cracks that lets our light shine through, and it is our truth and our love that sets us free. And we are the light that shines through the darkness. We are the love that frees ourselves and others. And we are worthy, worthy of every goal, every dream, and everything that we aspire to be. And now we breathe in. So take a moment to breathe in, to receive the newness of life, and exhale to release the old. And this begins our pep talk. Yes. So I wanna make sure I start implementing that in a lot of the conversations that I have um, with these as it is a safe space to come together and just talk freely and share love, laughter, and whatever else comes with that in that moment, so. Um, tell us a little more of who you are, Tree. Um, what do you what do you do? What do you offer? Okay, well, tell us more. <laughs> who you are, what you do, what you offer. Okay, so first of all, um, I offer voiceovers. If you ever need me for a voiceover, <laughs> I don't know how many voices I've done since I've been on this call already. Um, kidding, but not <laughs> kidding. Um, I am a vocal coach. I am a hugger. I am light, as you called me. I am a child of the king. I am the salt of the earth, darling. I am grateful. I am a friend. I'm an aunt. I'm a cousin. You know? Mm -hmm. I am living... I am of sound mind. I am inspirational. At least I hope to be. I pray to be. Um, I am myself. I am unique. 
and I am collectively interested in the embitterment of my fellow man. I am Tree G Music. Singer, songwriter, performing artist, recording artist. The list can go on. A smiler, I like to smile. I like to deeply think. I like to share. I like to leave things, people, places, and situations better than what I found them. Mm -hmm. I like to dream. I like to materialize. I like to ride go karts. <laughs> I like to relax. I like to eat good food. And again, the list can go on. I'll stop it there because <laughs> I know we have questions. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but no, I mean, again, that question is at its simplest and truest form. Again, who you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that also captured a lot of what you do and what you offer as well. So that is, listen, I'm here for it. So yeah. I'm here for all that. But no, so we do have a topic to discuss today. Um, and again, it's, whew, um, we can see how loaded this thing is. I know, um, right? <laughs> Come on, mashed potatoes. <laughs> right? Loaded. <laughs> Making bitch chives, sour cream, butter, pepper. <laughs> And that just shows how life is layered and a lot that comes with it for sure. <laughs> and but, tasty. And tasty. Um, mm -hmm. But definitely just discussing too, it's just as it is, is how to be the adult that you needed. Mm -hmm. um, whew. Um, first question I'll ask is um, hmm. What are some of the experiences that you remember in your life with the adults that's in your life? Is there anyone in particular that stood out or um, in regards to, and this can be a loaded question again, um, anything that you saw in those experiences that you knew you wanted to be like, certain things you knew that you didn't want to be like, um, what are some of those experiences you might have that you would like to share? Okay. Um, when I heard this question, it's like I had two or three schools of thought and then I have to select which one we're going to go forward with today and we could possibly get to all three but there's one um, memory that stuck out to me which was a teacher um, that had a car that I used to love like I just loved the car because a person that I um, had inspired to be like that was outside of my household. Uh, the first, you know, memory of a person that was outside of my family that I looked up to and um, just appreciated her mannerisms, the way she talked to people, uh, the way she treated um, the people that she taught. And just the way she kind of moved through life as much as I could see with my young, you know, perspective on life. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a car that she drove and I that became my favorite car because she had it. You know, it was trimmed a certain way. It was a certain color. And I can appreciate uh, being able to attach something material to who... Uh, I looked up to at the time because it made me feel like I always had something to think of that would remind me of that teacher. And I just appreciated um, the teaching style, the patience that she had, um, the, the life lessons that she would teach through, you know, cause and effect or through examples, how she would again take her time um she would use different 
uh, teaching techniques to make sure everyone in the classroom was on the same page because mm-hmm. we all learned differently, you know? Right. And I just remember the patience she had and that really stuck with me. Um, so experiences with adults in your life, is there anyone that stood out? And yeah, so I started it off with that one. <laughs> okay. All right. And and I agree with you that even with the other two that you said you had as well, maybe that may come up in some of the other um, questions we'll have. Or again, if you feel you want to jump back to that one, that's fine, too. Uh-huh. Um, so building off of that, um, especially with saying um, her patience and things stood out to you. Um, do you think your childhood or how do you think your childhood plays a part in um, how you show yourself as an adult today? Oh, I think it definitely plays a part. Um, Just stemming from that one example, I find myself uh, presenting things in different ways often just to make sure I grabbed or or everyone in the room could grasp what I was saying. Um, Mm. Because sometimes uh, I've been... I've heard that I speak in parables, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes it's like, well, the grass is really green only because the soil is almost black. And it's like, what do you mean, Tree? Um, and so I've learned to kind of open up my communication a bit just because of those interactions and, um, you know, one-to-one interactions, but also just seeing that she doesn't only treat me this way, she treats everyone this way. And it's Mm -hmm. so pleasant, you know, and I think that was an inspiring way to approach life, you know, not just one-to-one, but to every person. And then turning that patience back to yourself. And so that would say you know how does that play a part in my life today I actually find that I have been returning to uh, experiencing more grace in my life I feel that as we are on this journey of like tackling goals and execution and you know checking things off of our to-do list sometimes we forget the very intricate things that mean so much you know the little things um the the new the things that have uh special nuances that only can be shared between two and three and four people a small community you know that's one thing we're getting away from i think yeah. uh, but just community especially because we've all just been through a trying time with being so disconnected um, as a social norm, you know, and I think getting back to connecting with one another has a lot to do with the quality of life that we're all able to elevate to. So back to um, how my childhood, that specific uh, example ties into myself as an adult today. I find myself giving myself a little more grace, Mm -hmm. but I have to do it intentionally and I have to remind myself to do it sometime, but it's getting less and less the times that I'm having to say, hey, hold on, this is the first time you've done this. This is the first time that you've been alive in September of 2022. This is your first time ever seeing this day allow yourself a little bit of grace, allow yourself a little bit of time, allow yourself a little bit of a knowledge curve, you know, um, allow yourself to learn some things. It's okay not to get it right the first time, you know? And um, I think that's the kind of patience that I am now just realizing as I'm talking to you, um, recollecting on how that teacher, um, walked through her communication style and even laughing at herself sometimes, you know, has me returning to that 
um, all these years later. Gotcha. No, that's, you've made a lot of great points in that. And specifically, if just with main two words I'll pull, which is grace and patience. And to further, just also grace and compassion. Because um, mm-hmm. I feel like we, a lot of times in that, we do also try to give that to a lot of people, but we do forget to give ourselves that. We do. Um, and a lot of times, it's definitely a thing where we hold on to this thing of trying to be perfect from day one or the beginning of doing right. something. It's like, I remember this video was going around once before that was saying, you know, how sometimes in trying new things, we're afraid of looking foolish. And it's like, you're yeah, probably going to yeah. look a little silly. You know, it's like, you've right. never done this. So it's like, allow yourself that space to look silly or whatever. But exactly. it's it's weird that we don't. Like, it's so, it's so weird that we have this expectation that it's like to do anything for the first time. <laughs> um, and probably, it's probably really silly. But even for me, one of the reasons why I probably won't learn how to swim swim at my big age <laughs> is because <laughs> I expect myself going in to just know how to do it and it's like no your head's gonna go under you're going to slip <laughs> and that's okay um but no I think that was a very great point um and part of the reason why I even wanted to do this conversation too is just being the adult that you needed not only I think a lot of times we think it could be about so it's just me kind of explaining the topic a bit more too it's it can go both ways it can be one way of saying how do we be the adult to someone else Mm -hmm. in the way that we need it and also how to be the adult that we need it for ourselves so how to go back and give ourselves those things that we may have not gotten during those times as well yeah um so wow okay Great, great, great points. I'm sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah. When I was thinking about the topic, um, because, you know, this is the first time that I'm hearing the actual questions. And I think that it's a beautiful process to see how um, these questions will incite the different, you know, conversations that we'll have. Um, because this is going to be my first time hearing the questions, which I love. Um, and when I had the chance to think of the topic itself, I just wanted to differentiate the fact that I'm talking about the topic right now before we go back into the, what is that, third question? Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought about... How to be the adult you need it, right? So we think about if if we assume that we needed an adult, there has to be an assumption that a certain kind of adult was not there mm-hmm. in one regime of thought, right? Walk with me here. So <laughs> if if we assume that we needed an adult, a certain kind of an adult then that would be the same to say we did not have a certain kind of adult right? right and I was thinking about instances where I could truly say I would have handled that a little bit differently you know and as a younger person um we always hear like young folks say, when I grow up, I'm not going to do this. When I grow up, I'm not going to be that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like the old folks would say, you just keep living, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't know what we don't know. And once you get a certain age and once you get, you know, even certain experience, because I won't say a certain age, but certain experience, once you get certain experience, it's kind of like, you look back and realize, you know, what those who had wisdom um, far past what you were at that time, you start to realize they were right or yeah. you start to realize they were wrong. And so one thing that stuck out to me when you said 
um, that the topic was going to be, you know, being the adult that you once needed, how to be that adult. And two things that popped up for me was someone to say, you're right. Because I, I have experienced or even like I hear even people that I've grown up with or that are younger than me have said, you know, oh, this generation these days, right? Mm -hmm. And they start listing negative attributes about the generation today. And we all know the tall tale of every generation says, you know, oh, this generation now, they're just different. They're just, you know, and again, the negative attributes. But I'd like to start the conversation about what this new generation or, you know, the the generation that's speaking now, speaking positively about those to come because people have to realize you're speaking of your children you're speaking yeah. of your grandchildren you're speaking of the children that your great great grandchildren will have that will bear your name that will have your blood that will have your dna are you to speak on them in this way you know yeah it's like that and and it goes back to being the adult that you needed because I find that when I see people do that, it's because that is the kind of adult that they had. Yep. And when you are an adult for the first time, you do things, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? Yeah. While you're an adult now, do what you saw adults do when you were younger. And it's like a default, which cuts off the opportunity for us to think, think, think things through, change the narrative, um, add to this next generation instead of tearing them down, add to your own generation instead of repeating the things right. that um, the generation before you have already done, you know. Um, I remember a friend of mine making a joke about once they had their kid, they they finally had their kid and they were like, I'm going to, I don't know what they did. I forget what it was, but it was something like petty and, <laughs> and uh, I mean, you know, soft. It wasn't too harsh, but it was just, it had a lot of pettiness in it. Like, okay, so for instance... Lil June Bug, go turn off that light and get me the remote. Right? Yeah. And they bring the remote and then once the child leaves, they look over and say, I've been waiting to do that. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> and it's just like, okay, I get it. But you have able legs, able body, able limbs. Go ahead and use them things. You know yeah. what I mean? But not only that, I mean, I get the whole thing. It, it was funny and it was like a, you know, they were wearing it like a badge of honor and it was cute to see. Yet, if you take that same scenario and talk about the dream, if you will, that has been uh, peddled to us year after year, decade after decade, century after century, you know, the one that that incites self-doubt, the one that uh, does not promote worthiness, you know, that dream that has been peddled uh, to the generations. Let's change that narrative, you know, instead of saying, oh, I couldn't wait to do that. And yeah. the thing that, that you couldn't wait to do is actually uh promote demise of the you know mental wherewithal of the next generation you know mm -hmm. and uh, it's definitely the trauma it's oh yeah <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> am i the trauma it's, it's no, literally <laughs> the trauma of like <laughs> and, and you know again it, we have those same conversations and that's one of the things i love about like social media these days is that mm -hmm. 
yes, it shows a lot of our differences, but it shows a lot of our similarities as well. But it also shows how, you know, when you think about it now, you know, being in the Black African-American community, I'll speak for us in saying that it's like, whew, a lot of us have had some of those same experiences. <laughs> right. Uh, even the same analogy you just use, it just like, oh, you know, telling them to go and get something while they're, you know, the remote is right beside them the whole right. time kind of thing. Right. But it's like, it's so easy to want to pass on that trauma. And it instead is. of, like you said, it's like, let's reshape that and change the narrative. It's like, okay, someone did do this to me, but that doesn't mean I have to go back and inflict that same trauma on someone else. Exactly. You know? Um, and it's just, it's I don't know. It's and, and as you said, it is funny at times, so it is comical. And I think that's one of the things where it's, you know, all of us who are adults now, it's our trauma bonding. Um, <laughs> right. Ooh, let's talk about that. Ooh. Yes. Let's talk Before about we that. do, let's take a quick break. Um, and then we'll come back in with that part, with that point there. A quick break. Okay, so we are back from that break. Um, right before we went to that break, uh, I was making a point about trauma bonding, and Tree wanted to follow up with the comment on that. So yeah, let's discuss. Let's discuss trauma bonding. Okay, so you have to forgive me and all the listeners and fact checkers out there. You have to forgive me for not knowing the exact nomenclature to connect to what I am speaking of right now. But I'm going to do my research and uh, follow up with these conversations, maybe in a part two day trail. And okay, okay. so um, so if you would. Please be patient with me, and I'm going to try to describe the vibe. So when we trauma bond, we are sharing a deep traumatizing experience, describing it, and and I'm going to say two definitions here. One is describing it and, you know, reliving it, recanting it in order to put a person back into the place where we were in order for them to understand why um, it was so traumatizing for us. And then maybe that person doing the same and us um, having that connection there and that conversation strictly for the purposes of sharing these detrimental experiences that allow us to feel closer together because now we both know something about the other person we feel um heard we feel uh we don't feel exposed but even though we shared something exposing um mm-hmm. and so there's a a bond made at that time the other form of trauma bonding and i don't know all the definitions i'm just giving two examples that uh you go through something together um, yeah. you could, you could know this, this person, or you could not know this person. Um, but you, let's say both experience this traumatic experience together. Maybe it's, you know, almost, a, a crashing in a bus, you know, and so 20 people on a bus. And so, um, they all experience being, uh, thrown to another seat or up to the front of the back of the seat before them, you know, whatever it is, high um, palpitations of the heart happen. And then you look around and you see everyone is okay. And it's like, you all can finally breathe. And it's like, my goodness. Okay. So that's another bonding situation where it's a traumatic experience. Right. And so I think in the first definition, there is a release of I don't know the correct name again forgive me but you know how there is endorphin serotonin Mm -hmm. I believe another one is dopamine but those are definitions of things that are released in more positive times but I don't know the name for what we're talking about right now but somebody help me out there (laughs) Um, but there is a
uh, for things like protection, things like, uh, you know, memories that either bring joy or detriment. And we begin to connect muscle memory to these things, meaning yeah. we find identity in our trauma. Okay, been longer than a couple of seconds. It did pop out again. So I'm not sure. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, where did it stop? Last thing I heard was oof. <laughs> okay. Um I went into the mode of trying to reel it back in to make okay. sure we could pick back up. Gotcha. Um, and I did forget the point. I was like, ooh, am I going to text her or am I send a message on here? <laughs> was it at the point of um, serotonin, dopamine? We got past that part of releasing okay. different energies. Um, but was it was about it the part finding of finding solace in our trauma. Yes. Okay. So we begin to find solace in, in our trauma. We begin to find identity in our trauma. We begin to find community in our trauma. And if we have built our life around that community, around that peace that we find, who are we if we were to truly heal? Mm -hmm. And so it really causes us to be accountable and to be less dramatic and to be peaceful and to be quiet and to be still even through the chaos, you know, not going back to the things that we remember, the right. processes we remember, um, the reactions we remember, but to find peace in doing something different that is actually moving you towards more healing. Yes. I hope that makes sense. No, that definitely makes sense. And I think it's a thing that is definitely missed in a lot of moments and things because I think because of that reason, you know, again, this is probably going a little deeper, but even as a coaching principle, those are things I talk about as well as far as how people some people don't want to heal because they don't recognize or know, as you just stated as well, is who they are outside of their trauma. Right. They don't have an identity because they've, they have identified as those things so much that peace scares them because all they've known yeah. is chaos, you know? So, yeah. and I think all of this, the reason why, um, for those who are listening and still here with us, another reason of bringing all of this in as far as even discussing trauma bonding is because even in that this still ties into being that adult that you needed or, you know, teaching someone else and being an adult for them of, um, as we said, breaking the mold and doing something different. And I think that's the other reason why I wanted on the back end to come with mm -hmm. that of saying not only how, the, how to be the adult that you need for yourself, but how to be the adult that you may have needed, but to also be able to give that back to mm -hmm. younger generations, as you were saying earlier, as far as just, reshaping the narrative and instead of questioning a lot or, or speaking negatively against, but praying for it and being there for it, supporting, um, getting understanding. Um, one of the yeah. things that I love that NDRE says in her song, there's hope is um, if old people would talk to younger people, we could be a better people. Oh my um, goodness. And I so <laughs> say something about that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, in that, again, even in the moment of, again, even just discussing trauma bonding, we can undo a lot of that trauma and yes. unpack a lot of that if we did that. And I think that was, again, another biggest, a big component of what I wanted for this conversation, too, is just how to be that to also undo a lot of that. And how do we propel ourselves forward instead of still doing the things that ain't been working for us for the past 
couple of generations and decades, you know? Right. So. And then what just popped up for me when you said undo. So when we say the word undo in this instance, we think of, you know, file undo, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, We think of, you know, taking away the action of whatever was done to make it like it never existed before, right? When we say undo, U-N-D-O, to undo, right? So what pops up into my head is a different spelling, which is U-N-D-U-E, undo. So what trauma does is it provides a cloud of grief and guilt, Because you're feeling guilt because of, um, you know, what has happened. Maybe you could have done something different. Or you feel the guilt of realizing that you made it out. You Mm know, uh, survivor's remorse, if you will. And you begin to feel like something is owed to an entity outside of yourself. Like when people apologize a lot, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know, or I'm sorry, I apologize, or my, you know, of course, apologies are 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 needed in their just time, right? But mm-hmm. maybe I'm speaking to those who go around apologizing a lot. Um, you deserve to be in the good places that you've gotten to set foot in. Yes. And so you don't owe anyone anything. Um, And you do owe yourself the best parts of yourself. So quit giving them away first to everyone else. So undo. You owe no one everything. (laughs) You owe someone. Okay. What I'm saying is you don't owe anyone anything. Right? Right? But you owe everything to yourself. So the due date, the amount due um, is all wiped away. It's a clean slate when you choose to heal. Undo. Yes. Wow. And no, and see, it, it's great because I'm I'm too sometimes a, a word person. So to be able to look at it in both aspects like that is a thing. Because when you're able to look at it that way, it helps in that healing process to understand what your path is and what your journey is going to look like, uh-huh. um, and how you're going to set the tone for that work. So, um. I think we done probably covered the next couple of questions I had just in this. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> just in this moment. Um, one of the other ones that I had to kind of move from there. Um, wow. I, I need some pen and paper for myself on this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, question wise, um, do you think there was not ever like an aha moment for you um, realizing that you had the power and ability to be who you needed and to be maybe who someone else needed. Wow. Um, So many, actually so many aha moments, but it's like, which one um, best serves as an example for tonight is what I'm, trying to figure out um, an aha moment. What was your aha moment realizing you had the ability to be who you needed? Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Every time I say wow, there's, a, there's an example. <laughs> just, just, you know, coming through like a subway train. Uh-huh. Leave, and here comes another one. Oh, which one shall we talk about? Okay, let me work this chronological order I have going on in my head. Maybe if I release this thought, it will allow another one to feel invited to stay. So, 
being the adult that we need it. There is still a chance to be the adult that we need it. We can do these things by healing our inner child, doing things that we used to do as children, but as an adult. Um, and I'm speaking of, you know, if you liked playing tennis when you were seven, go and sign up for some tennis classes now as an adult, how to use your mechanical skills um, in tennis now as an adult and see how that brings back joy for you. And then one way to pay it forward is giving some time to the generations that have come before you. Um, because as we grow older and then grow older again, um, we actually return to needing what we needed when we first came into this world. So what I'm saying is when you were eight months and then you reach 45 and then you become 80 and 90, you begin to need some of the same things that you needed at eight months when you're mm -hmm. 80 and 90. So tap into relating to um, our elders, our wisdom possessors, if you will, those who have the experience, have the years, have the wisdom, go ahead and pour into them, smile with them, um, spend some time with them. It may be someone in your family, maybe someone at your church, maybe someone um, at your place of work someone who's about to retire, someone who kept you as a kid, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that would be wonderful. Now, back to my aha moment. There have been many things that I've prayed for and before uh, taking the journey to solidify my own relationship with God, I thought that I had to wait for my mom to pray on, on me, over me, with mm. me, for me. Um, well, mama, I need you to pray for this. I need you to pray for this, you know. Right. And then finally understanding truly what it meant to go to God for myself. And I remember asking God for a process. And it wasn't until two years into having that process, which was about five years from when I prayed for it, I realized, oh my God, literally. Yeah. <laughs> my God, literally. I've had this for two years, right? Yeah. And it's little moments like this that's like, I truly fervently requested, asked of this. And no, it wasn't just dropped in my lap. You know, yes, yeah. I had to do my own research. Yes, I had to, you know, ask um, around. Yes, I had to get uh, doors slammed in my face <laughs> because of the lack of understanding of why I might have needed this information. Yes, I had to go through a few bozo uh, situations <laughs> that... <laughs> thickened my skin in order for me to be prepared for what yeah. I asked God for. You understand? Yep. So my aha moment was, oh, everything worked out for my good, even the bad. Even the things that I have questions about still. Even the things that I didn't see coming, the things that caught me off guard, things I cried about. Even those things worked out for my good. Yes. And when you recognize that from the incubation of that prayer to it coming to fruition, the processes that had to be allowed 
in order for it to happen in the natural. Because it had already happened as a goal, as a dream, spiritually, as a man thinking. And so for it to come to fruition and truly be something that was not tangible, you start to see it materialize. It is a wonderful feeling to know that that thought, that spark started from nothing out of thin air into other people being blessed by it. Yeah. You know? <sighs> Absolutely. That was my aha moment. Wow. I don't even have words after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's many of them that has been uh, exchanged. Yeah, I mean, it's it is. It's just in the again you, you, the way that you give in the simplest forms of just being able to explain those and just similar situations again where it's that thing where it's like you know even for me in this moment it's like. Trying and trying to create opportunity for other people as well mm -hmm. as myself while doing even these pep talks and things like that. But mm -hmm. I think the beauty of it is is that one of the other reasons why I love it is because I talk a lot and I get to sit back and hear someone else speak. <laughs> I get to hear their story and their journey. Um, so it's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing this and why I like having someone different every month. I do feel like even after listening back to this, we're gonna have a we probably gonna have a part two to this. But we um, <laughs> <laughs> I just feel that's what it's gonna be. And that's okay. Um because I think it's a thing of um while talking about the undoing, I think it's these conversations that are due to us that mm, we need. Yes to help, again, break down those walls and those barriers. And I feel the more that we talk about it, the more um, other people also just begin to recognize and, and understand that as well. Yes. So, well, as a placeholder there then, um, as we, again, We'll probably have this part two. I'm just end it there today. <laughs> yeah, as we proceed <laughs> as to we give proceed. people what they need. <laughs> so I want to say thank you for joining. Um, thank you to those of you who are listening and have sat in and who may have questions. And you know, thank you for being open to this process and even clicking the link and taking a listen because. Thank you. Um, you may feel you clicked on this by accident, but it's it's not by it's not by chance that this was needed for you in this moment as well. Um, so thank you for listening. Um, thank you to my PEP team, which is myself. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some help, so it's I'm trying to get to that point of actually building more and having more people as a team, but I do. Uh, my best friend is helping me with a lot of different things in the background, so thank you for your help. Um, and Tree, thank again, thank you for your time today and your energy and your love and your light. And um, Again, musically, everybody knows I call all my people daylights, and we know oh. that again, you are a daylight to me. Yes, darling. Um, <laughs> and not only in the daytime. Okay, the nighttime too. Yeah. <laughs> so, as a closure, um, just kind of giving you the floor again to close out with yourself and tell the people where they can follow you. Right now, I have it with just your Instagram of at TreeG Music, but if there's any other um, places or how you want to connect with people. Um, let them know where else they can find you and um, talk, tell them where your music and stuff is too. Oh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, before I go into talking about myself again, I just want to say, Daytrail, thank you again for, first of all, launching uh, your platform in this way. Uh, you're going to help a lot of people with this, and I'm just happy to be a part of your journey. Uh, thank you for being consistent. Thank you for being integral. And thank you for caring 
about how it's presented. So professional, darling. Yes. Thank you. I try. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank you for seeing in me something that can be an, a help to um, people that listen to you, uh, to people that listen to me, and to those that we will meet together. Yes. Um, I want to say I am uh, filled with gratitude, darling. And uh, I am Tree G. I can be found on all social media as Tree G Music. I have two albums, one called You Don't Even Call, that can be found wherever you stream or download. The second one is called Freckled Faced Fantasies. And I am available for uh, songwriting. I am available for vocal lessons. Um, and I am available for vocal mentorship, stage presence, things of that nature. You just hit me up and let me know, and we'll talk it out from there. You can go through the link in my bio on Instagram to figure out the new things that are going on. Things like Vocal Yoga HTX. We're also going to bring it to Austin. So it's going to be Vocal Yoga ATX, okay. which is yoga inspired event where we connect with our communication with our voice you do not have to be a singer to join you just have to be a person that wants to communicate with the rest of the world or with one or with yourself in a better way thank you so much for having me day trail i am a daylight darling yes you are <laughs> indeed you are <laughs> but no seriously thank you and you guys know me. You can follow my music and everything at Day Trail um, and coaching things at um, the PP plan. Um, and this is going to be added to the new podcast setup as well, um, Yay. which I have to update. But that can be on that can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, or wherever you like to listen to your podcast. And it's going to be called the Daylights Den. Um, so I'm excited about that. So me too. Um, so yeah, be on the lookout for that. And that's it. As my usual reminder, y'all, be radical, be daring, be you. Much love and peace. <laughs>